So I've reviewed a few diode lasers on this channel and I've tried to focus specifically on lasers that I would actually recommend to you if you're in the market to buy one. Now that means I have a pile of lasers over in the corner behind me here that I'm just never going to review and uh, you just won't see them. Now this one is different. This is the Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro S2. Now if you're in the market for a, a mid-level diode laser, this one might be for you, so stick around. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to my shop. Now I've made no secret of the fact that the X-Tool D1 is my favorite diode laser. It's got great quality and performance and I have, I have it sitting around the shop here ready at a moment's notice to do a quick engrave if I need to. But it's got one huge problem. It's very expensive and uh, you know if, if you're going to spend a thousand dollars on the diode laser then great it's it's the laser for you but for a lot of people who are viewing the channel they're either just getting their first laser or maybe they're upgrading from that two to three hundred dollar range and you know heading into the kind of the middle of the market where they're going to spend four or five hundred dollars and if that's if that describes you then you're definitely not going to look at an x-tool d1 uh, it's just too expensive for you so uh, what I wanted to do here is take a look at an alternate. And that alternative laser is the Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro S2. Now, it's not a brand new laser by far. It's been around for several months, but it's still a very popular laser. And it does hit that sweet spot in the middle of the market in that four to $500 range. Now, what I wanted to do is take advantage of uh, the fact that Ortur and ZBank's distribution sent this to me. Uh, to have a look at and allow you a glimpse into uh, what this laser can do for, for that price. And honestly, we'll take a look at it and see if it really is a good competitor to the X-Tool D1 for roughly half the price. Now, what I want to do is I'll walk you through some of the highlights uh, of this laser, then we'll push it a bit into uh, some engraving. We'll try a little cutting. This laser is only a five watt, so it's not going to cut two by fours, but uh, it should be powerful enough to do a lot of, uh, you know, basic uh, cutting and certainly all the engraving you're ever going to want to do. Now, what I will then do is, is kind of come up with some things I like, some things maybe I think that they could improve on uh, for future lasers. And uh, I'll come up with a recommendation at the end and, and you know, maybe you want to consider this one. So with that, let's get started here. All right, so before we get rolling here, a quick look at some of the specs. Uh, the workspace here is 400 by 400 millimeters. Now, if you were familiar with the previous generation, the Ortur Laser Master 2, uh, it had a workspace area of 400 by 430 millimeters. And you might be wondering, well, why is this smaller? Uh, that's because on the Laser Master 2 Pro, uh, they added a shield around the laser, uh, just a light shield to protect your, well, to protect you from going blind, honestly. And that takes just a little bit more space, so they don't push the laser uh, as close to the 2020 extrusion, aluminum extrusion in the front, and that results in a little bit less space. So, you know, it is what it is, but what you get out of it is a much safer laser, and that's what's really important. Uh, power supply here, it's a 20 volt, 24 volt supply rather than, than a 12 that some companies will use. Uh, lots of safety features, and we can kind of look at these in a little more detail maybe. Uh, certainly flame uh, detection and bump detection, and it'll sound an alarm if it detects a fire. That's what the alarm is for, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the standard or tour 32-bit controller. Uh, you're familiar with it if you've seen the Artur Laser Master 2. Uh, the nice thing about this laser, just a couple of extra features, it's got proper limit switches, which is sorely missed in most diode lasers. So it's a nice little feature considering the price. And it has some actual cable management, which, uh, you know, you've heard me complain in diode lasers before about cables uh, dangling around. And certainly the X-Tool D1 has this problem. The, you know, you take a fine frame design and then you let the cables hang around uh, on the ground around it. So uh, it's nice to have this cable management. Anyway, with that, we can get started here. Uh, we'll take a, a quick walk around on the laser and uh, you know, then we'll get to some testing. Okay, I'm doing a uh, handheld here. So if, if there's a little shake, I apologize. So we'll start with the front panel, the controller, and it's got a nice emergency switch. So you can 
hit the emergency if anything happens. You also got an alarm that uh, will sound if it detects uh, any fire under the laser. Uh, other than that, the usual uh, reset, power. If you have a remote uh, controller, you can put it on there. Uh, USB and power. Now the nice thing here is the USB and power, all the cables are sitting out in the front so they don't really get in the way and uh, you've heard me complain about that with several other lasers as well where the cables come out uh, out the top and then every time you're trying to reach over you're hitting them. So, so you know, that's the controller. Alright, so moving over to the side of the laser we have all the cables coming out of the controller. Uh, two of them come up to the limit switch. This is the, the y-axis, so the moving forward. Now they have this drag chain I mentioned. They have half-decent cable handling, so this is always nice and neat. Now they did kind of drop the ball here. Uh, it just looks a little messy. All these cables just kind of come out and, and sit unterminated. I think they could have maybe put a cover. Uh, the other limit switch for the x-axis. Now they didn't uh, for the laser itself, they didn't put a, any kind of drag chain or anything here. Uh, it's fine. It's, it doesn't get in the way, but it, it does, you know, kind of distract. You've got this thing kind of sitting here. So now we get down to the actual laser. Uh, the module is, you know, typical of most of these lasers. Now this is the LU24LF, and LF means long focus. So this module, while it's only 5 watts, is actually designed to do better cutting. Uh, you might also notice down below here, if I could lift up the, the shield, uh, I've got the air uh, assist uh, nozzle mounted here. And if I connect that to my pump, we'll, we'll give that a try as well. And what that allows you to do is, you know, further enhance the cutting. Uh, it tends to blow any anything out of the way, so it cuts better. Uh, anyway, that's the the laser module. Again, it's only a five watt, but uh, with the long focus, it should be actually pretty decent at cutting. All right, as usual, first thing we need to do is hook the laser up to some software so we can control it. And I'm going to use Lightburn. Now, what I'm going to do is is try and detect the laser and see if I can have Lightburn automatically configure it. So we'll take a look, the laser is on and it certainly did a, a home here. So uh, hopefully we can find it. And yep, there it is. So we'll pick it and we'll call it the Laser Master 2 Pro S2. Actually, I'll put Otur or tour in front of it as well, just so I don't mess anything up. Yes, it's 400 by 400 millimeters. Uh, sure, we'll assume that the laser configured itself properly. We can use auto home here because the laser has limit switches and uh, that should be it. Now, as usual uh, for light burn, once uh, this gets uh, written, uh, we will need to restart Lightburn because Lightburn uh, just doesn't seem to handle this very well when you add a new device. So we'll restart it. All right, so with Lightburn uh, restarted here, uh, I can pick the Laser Master 2 Pro and I can hear the laser clicking over and I can move it, which is good. So we can go back to the home. And now we can load an image in and see what, what we can do. So as always, I'll start with my standard dog picture on cardboard. And the reason I use that is because cardboard is actually a pretty contrasty material. Either you get burn through or, it, or the beam doesn't touch it. And getting the settings just right is, is um, a good test. Now, I, because we're absolute, I can move the photo up towards the center of the laser. I don't have to try and randomly position things, which is, which is awesome. Uh, as far as power settings go, speed here, 6,000 millimeters per minute and 65% on, uh, on the image. And to do the outline cut, it's 1,000 millimeters per minute at 100%, and that should cut through it.
Okay, so we, I ran a few tests here. We take a look at the results. So the standard cardboard test uh, looks pretty good, actually. Let me see if I can zoom in here. And you can see it looks great. Even sides where I cut it are pretty good. On the uh, translucent black acrylic, uh, again, same, looks pretty awesome. Uh, by comparison, the other side, I have the Xtool D1. So you can see there's almost no difference. So same thing with MDF. On the top here, you can see the Xtool D1 and on the bottom, you can see the LaserMaster 2 Pro S2. Now notice the bottom one is just a little bit lighter. It's because it's a five watt laser and I used essentially the same power setting. So that's why it looks that way. If I had amped up the power settings, it would look just fine. Now stainless steel. This is one place where I think the Laser Master 2 Pro kind of fell short. If I can get this out of the light. Uh, you can see on the left there, there's two instances of the Xtool D1 as well as some of the others. And uh, on the upper right is the Laser Master 2 Pro. And you can see it's a little lighter. I actually struggled a bit to, to get the settings right. Uh, I had to do a lot of power and go really slow. So, but Finally, on the engraving side, I did uh, just some leather here, just, just for, get, uh, for kicks. And it did a great job. Again, the settings are for a 10 watt laser. So the triangle, the pie slice underneath the pie symbol there is just ghostly. It's there, but the power was a little, was a little light, but the rest of it looks fine. Now on the cutting side, I did two things. Uh, I first did uh, my usual maple test and you can see it, it didn't cut through, of course, because it's a five watt laser. This is quarter inch maple. It's pretty hard stuff, but uh, I did have the air on the, uh, on the laser. I put the air pump on, so air assist. And you can see there's absolutely, this was 12 passes at 100%, and there's no real hazing there at all. By comparison, if you look at some of these others, these are other lasers I tested. Uh, you can see there's all kinds of charring there. So definitely the air assist is a nice, is a nice add. Uh, last thing I did was just a cut of three millimeter uh, Baltic birch and again uh, with the air assist on and you can see there's no charring there and it, it just popped right out and did a very nice cutting job. So, so there you go. That's it. It's uh, all in all a pretty, pretty nice laser. All right, so you saw the results there. Uh, now let's talk about some things I really liked and things I think they could improve on. Uh, on the like side, uh, definitely the, the price, uh, at roughly half the price of an Xtool D1, uh, you're getting a pretty awesome laser for that money. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's certainly not in the, in the performance range of a D1, but you, know, you have to keep looking at your checkbook and going, well, this is the right price for this laser. Uh, the air assist is a really nice add that definitely helps with cutting uh, both uh, the thickness of cutting as well as uh, just keeping the surface clean. And uh, finally here on the, on the, on the pro side, uh, I like the cable handling on the side. I think they could have went one step further and did a little bit better handling on the, uh, on the laser cable, but uh, the cable chain just keeps everything so nice and neat there. Now on the con side, uh, you know, things I think they could improve on. Uh, while I was cutting uh, without the air on, uh, the fire sensor was just way too sensitive. It kept going off and I'd have to go over and push the power button and, and that's kind of annoying. Now you can turn it off. There's, there's a, a gerbil code to turn that off if you really want to. It's there for a reason though. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you can find that balance. Uh, next on the list here, uh, unlike a lot of lasers, there just seem to be a lot of parts here. I, I don't think there, there was substantially more, but, but it just seemed like it took a long time to put together. Uh, nothing really complex. It just seemed like it took a long time. It took me 
uh, while I was recording, it took me, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes to put it together. Uh, and last on the list, uh, this is regards to the air assist, which is a feature I love. Uh, if, you're, if you want that feature, you're going to have to find yourself a pump. They don't include even, even a, 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 a small pump uh, for, that, for, the, for the laser. Uh, you know, honestly, if you're going to provide the air assist, you should also provide the pump, even if it does add, you know, 40 or $50 to the cost, because you're going to have to go get that anyway. And honestly, if you open the box and go, Hey, I've got air assist. And then you realize you don't have a pump. You're going to be disappointed, even though it's an awesome feature. Uh, so that's it. Uh, uh, my final score here, uh, definitely this is in the, in the mid to high four, four out of five, uh, for the money. Again, I keep looking at the price and going, wow, this is a lot of laser for this price. Uh, definitely a really nice laser. And I look forward to seeing what Otur has up their sleeve next. Now, uh, you can buy one of these. I'll put an affiliate link in, in the description down below. If you're going to buy one of these, please use that link. You'll help out the channel. Uh, if you don't, it, you know, you're still getting a great laser. You're just not helping me, but, but you're going to get a great laser regardless. Uh, so with that, we'll wind down. Definitely, if you're in the market for a first uh, or even second kind of diode laser in the, in the mid, mid range of the market, uh, I would definitely recommend this one. So with that, uh, well, I'll shut her down here, get out there and make your world, and I'll see you next time.